Hey guys, some really cool numbers for you. This is episode eight, and we have 33 days until the boat goes in the water, 42 days until we move out of the house and onto the boat, and 135 days until we actually leave. So this video is going to be a lot less about fun and a lot less about sailing and a lot more about the things we're doing to get our boat ready to go. All the electronics and navigation and the toilet and the water and everything. Um, it's going to be very detail oriented so I apologize if you're watching for fun videos about sailing. It's probably not a good one. <laughs> um, so one of the, the biggest things about what we're doing and the videos we're sharing is to show you that it can be done quite cheaply. Uh, our motto is go small, go simple, go now. So the way we're doing all of the electronics and all of the systems on our boat is going to be the cheapest way we can find to do it. Um, we're not going to be spending a ton of money on commercial products. We're going to be building things ourselves, a lot of DIY. So bear that in mind as you watch. You may find a different way to do things. You may want things done on your boat a different way. We're doing them to stay cheap. Hey guys, what's up? It's Candice from Lady K Sailing, and uh, I just wanted to touch base with you, let you know what I've got going on coming up the next couple weeks. Um, right now, there's my to-do list over there. Uh, cushions and cushions and cushions and more cushions and, oh, got a dodger. Need some repair. Um, more cushions. Um, let me think. Uh, yeah, some more cushions. And what else do I have to do? Um, got to go through our sales, uh, do some patchwork on those. Um, I know, what else do we have to do? There's a few things I wanted to make for the inside of the boat. Um, as mentioned in a previous video, or did we cut that out? I can't remember. Uh, I'm uh, going to be making a rack for our dishes so they all snap into place. Not the dishes themselves, but it's it's up here. It makes sense. Um, so I'm gonna do that. Uh, I gotta get that started soon-ish. Um, and on top of that, I am trying to... I started last night. Um, I'm gonna try to make some sort of cushiony thing, like a... I don't know, kind of like a duffel bag for like with foam in it for our pots and pans, more so the uh, the frying pans. Um, I've got a very specific spot in the boat, um, in the galley, where I'd like to hang them, but without hearing the clunk, 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 clunk every time we hit a wave. Um, so that's, uh, I can't find anything where somebody else has done that, so I'm going to attempt to do that myself, and if all goes well, maybe there will be a tutorial video. Uh, other than that, uh, yeah, cushions, all the cushions. Um, I'm gonna redo our cockpit cushions, which are very, very sad looking, got, as you can see. We've got, uh, I still have some Sumbrella left over from when I did the Dodger, so I do intend to make a stack pack. I just don't, it's not at the top of the priority list right now. Um, that's more of a, uh, a luxury than a necessity in these trying times. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Uh, that's where I'm at. And yeah, if uh, you have any sailboat work that you need done, um, let me know. Uh -huh. uh, or not. Doesn't really matter. Most people tend to DIY. So yeah, there's that. And um, yeah, so this is my current uh, setup for sewing. I've got my computerized machine for 
making clothes, repairing clothes, hems, so on and so forth. Um, so for the very basic stuff. And then I've got my Barracuda. Um, that was my gift from Tim a couple years ago, last year? Yes, last year. Um, for our one year anniversary. Um, I love it. I love it. It's such a beast. So how we're going to get internet on the boat is kind of a complicated subject. For starters, um, we have a router that has a SIM card slot. So if we end up in a place like the Bahamas where you can buy a SIM card every month, um, which is kind of how it works in the Caribbean, you pop it into the router and you have internet on the boat. Another thing we're going to be doing, particularly for our trip through the U.S., is going to be trying to grab free Wi-Fi signals from local coffee shops and stuff. To do that, we have this rig, and I'm going to show you. I apologize for the mess in the garage, but this antenna that you can see there, uh, I think it's four feet, and it's uh, an M2 uh, antenna radio. Um, that is what you get when you buy a professional-grade marine Wi-Fi antenna. Uh, like the Rogue Wave is probably the most common one. Um, this is how they make the Rogue Wave. We made this ourselves. So it's the M2 bullet mounted to an omnidirectional antenna. And this is powered by, uh, it'll go on 12 volt or 24 volt. It doesn't care which. So what it does is it, it'll come, this will be mounted at the top of our mast. And then an ethernet cord comes down into the mast. And then somewhere in the mast, uh, this will go all the way to the bottom of the mast. And at the bottom of the mast, we have this device. Um, this is a PoE. Uh, what it does is it sends electricity up the ethernet cord to the antenna so that the antenna has power. Um, this happens to be a PoE I found on the internet that runs on 12 volt. So that's really cool. We'll be able to plug that right into our house bank, which actually two of them are right here. Um, and once it's plugged into the house bank, uh, it'll light up this antenna and then out of the other end comes an ethernet cable that will go into a regular everyday router. Um, and the cool thing about regular everyday routers is they tend to run on 12 volt as well. Um, we have a few modifications to make to make, the, make it clean 12 volt, but it'll work. So that's how we're going to get our Wi-Fi. We're going to have a wireless signal in the boat, uh, probably called Lady K or something. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it. It's, it's pretty simple. Uh, there's not a lot to it. All of these parts are available online. Um, these things are about 10 bucks. I ordered a couple of them because you never know how long they're going to last. Uh, Ethernet cable is cheap and the bullet antenna is about $100 to $110. Uh, one of these omnidirectionals uh, you could also get on Amazon. So uh, really for maybe 200 bucks, you can put the whole thing together instead of spending 800 on the Rogue Wave or on one of those commercial prepared solutions. That's it. Hey, I wanna talk about our water system next. So. When you're cruising from island to island in the Caribbean, you're not going to have a garden hose to fill back up the water tank on your boat. And our water tank in our boat is only 110 liters, which, I mean, might last a week if we're really conservative. Uh, and you can't drink seawater, so you have to come up with some kind of solution. Very commonly, what people do is they get big jugs that they can keep on their deck. So uh, we went to Walmart and we found these things. They hold... Uh, 26 and a half liters. Uh, they got a little spigot built into that thing so that you can put them on their side and get water out of them really easily. Uh, and we got six of them. So um, when we do start to run low on water, we can throw all those in our dinghy and shoot into land. Uh, and then usually you have to pay for it, but you can get water uh, in the Bahamas or in wherever you happen to be. Um, we're gonna try to avoid doing that. And there was a reason we got six of those things. Usually people have two or maybe four. Um, we're also gonna rig up some rainwater collection and we're gonna rig up a filter, like a regular home filter under the sink in the galley or the kitchen of our boat. So when we start to run low, if it starts raining, we're gonna have some um, rainwater collection flaps sort of that are on the side of the boat that protect us from wind. But when it starts raining, they can fold down and collect water and have hoses run into the cockpit and we can refill those jugs. So if we have six of them, then anytime it rains, we'll be able to collect 150 some odd liters of water, which would be really cool. A couple quick updates. Uh, we needed a new DC panel. Our DC panel is really old and uh, it doesn't have 
enough space and, and all that kind of stuff. And it's really disorganized and it's been rewired 800 times. So nobody knows what any wires do. So we decided to put it in a new DC panel. So instead of buying a new DC panel, we're doing a couple cool things. So one of the things is this is going to be our primary DC panel. Uh, and this is just uh, high density polyethylene with uh, some switches mounted in them. So we got blue LED switches on the bottom and green LED switches in the top. Uh, the top is gonna be nav lights, anchor lights, steaming light, and deck lights. And the bottom is gonna be all your utilities like the water pump and things like that. The fridge and the bilge pump and the stereo's constant power run off a completely separate fuse box. And I actually bought fuse boxes that hold uh, automotive uh, fuses so that we can always have the right size fuse for whatever we're doing and so that we never have to find the hard to find fuses because right now our um, panel uses those glass cylinder fuses which I have a sneaking suspicion are going to be really hard to track down based on where we are in the world. But anyway, I made those two panels so that we have blade fuses and we'll be putting those in as soon as we move on to the boat. The other project for today is um, mounting some sort of lights to the bottom of our spreaders. Um, and the cool thing is, because now trucks and 4x4s have these light bars on them, uh, these are getting really, really cheap. So super, super bright LED light bars. Uh, and the idea is to mount them directly to the bottom of the spreader. Uh, one of them sort of cantered backwards and one of them cantered forward. Um, that way they light up the front and the back of the boat and the sides of the boat if it's dark and we need to get around on deck. So I'm going to drill into these, I'm going to tap the holes, uh, I'm going to use plumber's tape to try and limit the galvanic corrosion from the bolt going into the aluminum, and we'll get those mounted up, and then obviously one of those switches are going to be to run these, which is going to be pretty cool. So that's the middle of the project right now. Uh, hey, so we get a lot of questions about how we're going to do certain things, so I want to give you a quick run through of all of the little things we're doing to get our boat ready for what we're doing. Um, there's a lot going on. I've got I'd probably 10 projects on the go today. So a quick run through. Um, you saw our new DC panel that we, uh, we're going to have installed in the boat. The other one with the stereo and the VHF, I installed it this weekend, so it's already done. Uh, I was talking about the fuse blocks a little bit. Um, I got these things on Amazon and they take automotive blade fuses. So you have a 12 volt power coming in and then you can run six things off this one. Uh, this is the small one that's going to be down by our battery bank that's going to run our constant power stuff, like the constant power to the stereo and things like that. Um, one of the cool things about these is if one of the fuses blows, the little LED light will come on. So you'll always know if you have a blown fuse, like just by a glance. And then it has a glass cover, of course, or the plastic cover. So that's super cool. Um, we got a couple of these. Uh, these are circuit breakers or uh, fuse protection essentially, but instead of having a big fuse, this is a 50 amp, instead of having a big fuse on your main power line, you can have these breakers. They're a little bit more expensive, but you don't ever have to change a fuse. If it blows, it just blows. And then you can turn it back on if you need to. Um, so those are pretty cool. That's the one for the solar array. It's 50 amps because our solar um, charge controller, the MPPT thing, is a 50 amp. Um, these, probably you know what those are anyway, they're, they're, uh, they're float switches. So they go in your bilge and when the water gets high enough it lifts up, kind of like the thing in your toilet. It lifts up and then there's two wires coming out of it that can turn on your bilge pump. So one of them is going to turn on our bilge pump and then the other one I'm going to mount a bit higher in the bilge and it's going to turn on these guys and that is a high water alarm. So I think they just beep really loud. But I got two of them and that way, if the water gets up high enough, it'll turn the bilge on, and if it keeps getting higher, and it becomes something we need to know about, uh, it will actually turn these things on. So you'll hear a screeching noise throughout the whole boat to tell you that you know something's wrong. So that's sort of the electrical stuff we're working on right now. Uh, in the middle, we got our navigation. So we're gonna have an iPad at the helm with uh, one of the Nav Navionics type apps. Um, I got a mounting bracket for it to mount to our pedestal. Um, and then we'll also have a conventional chart plotter, um, which we've been using for a couple years already. Um, so that's navigation. We're going to have quite a few i, I products. So if one of the iPads dies, we should be okay. Then the uh, big question for us, I think, because we like to watch movies, is how are you going to watch movies on the boat? Uh, and that brings us into a whole conversation about electrical things. So be prepared. This is going to be an opinionated thing. But I don't like the idea of converting 12 volt boat power up to 110 volt 
so that you can watch a movie. Um, there's so many products out now that you can watch movies on that don't need 110 horsepower. So why bother converting 12 up to 110 just to convert it back down to run your laptop? Typically, our laptop will run off 19. So why not find a way to convert 12 to 19? And then you're not wasting uh, because inverting power is very wasteful. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this tablet. Um, and it's just a regular Windows 10 tablet. Uh, it runs on 19 volt. Um, obviously got batteries in it, but it runs on 19 volt. Um, so that's going to be our primary movie watching computer. It's an i5 with a, a, a lot of RAM. And then we of course have hard drives full of movies and TV shows. So in order to get a bigger screen and bigger sound, uh, I bought this. Uh, it's a mounting system for the monitor that we're going to use. We're going to use a conventional house monitor. It's a 27 inch. Uh, actually, I can probably just show you. Um, we wanted to have a big enough screen. So a 27 is plenty big for your boat. Uh, it's this one here. So it's a 4K 27 inch screen. The problem is it doesn't have the holes in the back so that it can be well mounted. So I had to order this specific proprietary gizmo that bolts to the foot of the monitor and then it provides you a place to well mount it. So I also ordered a little swing arm from Best Buy that's going to allow that monitor to point at the nav station or to point at the bed where we sleep. And it tilts and swivels on everything. So that monitor will double as a workstation and our TV. The monitor is also 19 volt. So everything in this whole movie watching scenario is going to be 19 volt. So we bought a couple of things. I tested this one already. This is off Amazon. It converts 12 volt to 19 volt. So, and it does six amps. So this will run that tablet and it'll run the monitor. And that only uses like 70% of the six amps that it's capable of. Uh, and that's on power up, that's at spike. We also got this one, uh, it's a little buck converter. It's 12 volt in and then anything from, I think it goes as low as five volt to as high as, uh, I think it's 30 or 32. Uh, but we can run this as a 19 volt converter too. Um, so that's pretty cool, we got two of those. Uh, and then for sound, we don't wanna be like listening to the movies we're watching off of the sound on the tablet, that would suck. So the tablet has Bluetooth. We're going to Bluetooth it to the car stereo that's mounted in our boat uh, and, and install some internal speakers. So I got one of these. It's a pile speaker switch. So you can have your outside speakers on or both speakers on or just your inside speakers on. So that'll help us tremendously. Um, and that's it. That's what's going on right now as far as that stuff goes. Uh, I got the spreader lights done. So they're ready to go. Um, bright, really, really bright LEDs. So that'll light up our whole deck. And that should be it. If you liked this episode of Lady K Sailing, please consider joining us on Patreon, where you can send us as little as a dollar or two every time we release a new episode. Your contribution helps us continue sharing this adventure and keeps the dream alive. Becoming a patron also gives you early access to new videos and the password to our secret treasures section at ladykaysailing.com where you can find all sorts of cool stuff.